ENIAC. Before laptops, before screens, before even the idea of personal computing, there was ENIAC. Built during World War II, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, or ENIAC, was designed to calculate artillery trajectories for the U.S. Army. It was enormous, about 100 feet long, weighed 27 tons, and used 18,000 vacuum tubes that glowed like a miniature city at night. If someone wanted to run a new program, they couldn't just type it in. They had to physically rewire the thing with cables and switches. Programming ENIAC took days, sometimes weeks, but it worked. ENIAC could perform 5,000 calculations per second, which, in the 1940s, was mind-blowing. Scientists use it to calculate nuclear reactions, weather predictions, and rocket trajectories. The funny part? It was so big and hot, the engineers joked that if you stood too close, you'd get a tan. But ENIAC proved one thing. Machines could think faster than humans, at least with enough electricity. IBM 650 After ENIAC, computers slowly moved from government labs to businesses. IBM saw the potential and released the IBM 650, the first mass-produced computer meant for everyday corporate use. It was the size of a fridge and stored data on a rotating magnetic drum. It wasn't powerful by modern standards, but it was reliable. And that was enough for banks, universities, and insurance companies to start lining up. IBM even rented the machines to clients instead of selling them outright, sort of like a Netflix for data crunching. It cost about $3,000 a month to lease, which was an insane amount back then, but companies treated it like a superpower. The IBM 650 gave computing a new home, the corporate world. It was the bridge between giant government projects and the personal tech revolution that would follow. Apple II Fast forward to the late 1970s, the world was ready for computers that didn't live in basements. Enter the Apple II, created by Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs in the California garage. It was colorful, compact, and surprisingly friendly. For the first time, people could buy a computer, plug it into their TV, and start typing commands. The Apple II came with color graphics, a keyboard, and floppy disks for saving programs. A miracle for its time. Kids used it to play Oregon Trail. Schools bought them in bulk. Parents said it was for homework, but everyone knew it was for games. The Apple II turned computers from scary machines into approachable tools. It didn't just start a company, it started a culture. Without it? we might all still be scared of command lines and punch cards. IBM PC While Apple was busy making computers fun, IBM made them serious. The IBM personal computer looked simple, a beige box with a keyboard, but it became the blueprint for nearly every desktop after it. What made it special was openness. IBM allowed other companies to build compatible machines, which accidentally created an entire industry of PC clones. Suddenly, everyone from Dell to Compaq was making IBM-compatible computers. And powering it all was Microsoft's MS-DOS, a simple command-line operating system that would later evolve into Windows. If the Apple II was the birth of home computing, the IBM PC was the rise of the office machine. It was reliable, professional, and powerful enough to run spreadsheets, which, believe it or not, made accountants weep tears of joy. Macintosh When Apple introduced the Macintosh, it felt like something out of science fiction. It was the first computer most people ever saw with a mouse and a graphical interface. Instead of typing commands, you could point, click, and drag icons across the screen. It was the dawn of user-friendly computing. Suddenly, computers weren't just for engineers. They were for artists, writers, and designers. Apple's famous 1984 Super Bowl commercial showed the Mac as a rebel breaking free from conformity. And it worked. The Mac inspired a generation of creative minds, from early digital artists to musicians tinkering with sound software. Sure, it wasn't cheap, but it made people smile when they turned it on. That little Happy Mac icon at startup became a symbol of technology that felt alive. Commodore 64 Yes, the timeline overlaps here, but you can't tell the story of computers without the Commodore 64. While the Macintosh was a luxury, the Commodore 64 was affordable 
and that made it legendary. It connected directly to your TV, ran on cartridges or floppy disks, and played games with 8-bit graphics that felt magical at the time. It was also a learning tool. Kids typed codes for magazines to make pixelated fireworks or bouncing balls on the screen. Many modern programmers, game developers, and even cybersecurity experts started with this humble machine. And with over 17 million sold, it remains the best-selling single computer model ever made. The Commodore 64 turned computer geek into a badge of honor, even if your parents still thought you were just playing games. Windows 95 PC By the mid-90s, computers had officially invaded the home. The launch of Windows 95 was a cultural event, complete with TV commercials, midnight store openings, and a soundtrack by the Rolling Stones. Windows 95 introduced a start menu, taskbar, and desktop we still recognize today. For the first time, average people could navigate a computer without reading a manual the size of a phone book. It also arrived right as the internet began to explode. Suddenly, your beige box could talk to other beige boxes around the world. Email, chat rooms, and early websites turned PCs into social machines. The 90s were full of screeching dial-up modems, and you've got mail moments. But it was exciting. Computers had officially gone from hobbyist toys to everyday necessities. MacBook Air When Steve Jobs pulled the first MacBook Air out of a manila envelope on stage, the crowd gasped. It was impossibly thin, impossibly sleek, and made every other laptop look like a tank. No CD drive, barely any ports, just a glowing Apple logo and a promise of simplicity. At first, people complained about the lack of features, but the air was predicting the future. Everything was moving to the cloud, and suddenly, nobody missed the disks. The air popularized the modern Ultrabook design, thin, light, and all-day battery life. It became the go-to machine for students, travelers, and coffee shop warriors everywhere. Even today's Windows laptops still borrow its silhouette. The Air wasn't just a laptop. It was a lifestyle statement. Apple M1 Mac For decades, Apple relied on Intel chips like everyone else. But in 2020, they shocked the world by switching to their own silicon, the M1 chip. This wasn't just a speed boost. The M1 redefined efficiency. It ran quietly, barely heated up, and made MacBooks faster than most desktop PCs. It also marked the start of an era where your phone, tablet, and laptop could all run on similar architecture, creating a seamless ecosystem. Developers were stunned. Apps opened instantly. Battery life doubled. Fans, literal fans, stopped spinning because the laptop didn't even need them. The M1 proved how far we'd come since NEX vacuum tubes. The same power that once needed an entire room now fit into a thin aluminum shell. Today's AI Supercomputers The computers of today don't just calculate, they learn. Machines like NVIDIA's DGX systems and Google's TPUs are built for artificial intelligence. Processing data at speeds NEX creators couldn't even imagine. These supercomputers train language models, simulate protein folding for new medicines, and even design other computers. They are made up of thousands of processors working together, sometimes taking up entire warehouses. But their results are shaping the future of technology, science, and creativity. The craziest part? You're already using their output. The phone in your pocket, the app recommending your next song, even the tool writing this script, all powered by machines that learn faster than any human ever could. We've gone from rewiring circuits to training algorithms, from rooms full of cables to chips smaller than a fingernail.